Howdy! I'm Professor Curtis of Aspire Mountain Academy, here with more statistics homework help. Today, we're going to learn how to use a z-score to complete hypothesis testing for a claim of equality. Here's our problem statement. The test statistic of z equals 2.45 is obtained when testing the claim that the population proportion is greater than 30%. Part A. Identify the hypothesis test as being two-tailed, left-tailed, or right-tailed. Part B. Find the p-value. Part C. Using a significance level of alpha equals 5%, should we reject H0 or should we fail to reject H0? Okay, Part A wants us to identify the hypothesis test as being two-tailed, left-tailed, or right-tailed. To do that, we simply look at the claim that we're making. Remember that this often comes from the alternative hypothesis that we create, and very often the alternative hypothesis reflects the claim that's being made. Here the claim that's being made is that the population proportion is greater than 3%, than 30%. If you look at the inequality sign, the greater than sign, it's like an arrow pointing to the right. That indicates that this is a right-tailed test. So I'm going to put that here in my answer field. Well done! Now, Part B asks us to find the p-value. To do this, I'm going to pull up StatCrunch and get into my normal calculator. The only thing we have to go on is the z-score. And so that's why I'm pulling up the normal calculator. So to do that, I go to Stat, Calculator, Normal. And here in my normal calculator, I'm going to reflect the alternative hypothesis, or the claim, here in my problem statement. But in order to do that, I have to do that through the z-score. Notice the default values that come up in my normal calculator are for the standard normal distribution. This is what we want. So I'm going to leave those values alone. Then here in my probability fields, down below, I'm going to make sure that this inequality sign matches the test that I'm running. Part A, we concluded that we're doing a right-tailed test. So that means this inequality sign needs to be greater than or equal to. Here in the next field, I'm going to put the z-score that they give me. And now I press Compute. And this area underneath the curve that's shaded in red on your normal calculator is this number here, 0 0.007, and that is the p-value. So I'm going to put that here in my answer field. Fantastic! And last but not least, part C asks us to choose the correct conclusion below. We're either going to fail to reject H0, or we're going to reject H0. And the way we do that is by comparing the p-value to our alpha level. The alpha level that we're given here is 5%. The p-value that we're given is 7 tenths of 1%. So the p-value here is less than our alpha value. Therefore, we are in the region of rejection, and we're going to go ahead and reject H0 and say that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. Rejecting H0 and saying there's not sufficient evidence doesn't add up. It's not consistent. So if we reject H0, there's going to be sufficient evidence to support the claim. If we fail to reject H0, there's going to be insufficient evidence to support the claim. Here, we're actually going to reject H0 because our p-value is less than our alpha value. Well done! And that's how we do it at Aspire Mountain Academy. Be sure to leave your comments below. Let us know how good a job we did or how we can improve. And if your stats teacher is boring or just doesn't care to help you learn stats, go to AspireMountainAcademy.com where you can find out more about accessing our lecture videos or provide feedback on what you'd like to see. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.